I'm Dr. John West. I'm a breast cancer surgeon. Today we have the privilege of talking to one of the world's finest breast imagers or mammographers, Dr. Jun Chen. Jun, nice to have an opportunity to talk to you. Thank you for having me. We, we work together almost every day. and We've what, worked together 20 years. I don't know how many cancers we've seen together, but it's got to be thousands and thousands. I, I know just how good you are. You actually saved my wife's life by detecting a very small cancer on her 3D mammogram. So we're, the West family is forever indebted for all your great work. Oh, thank you for the kind words. So um, let's just start with the basics. Uh, you get a lot of questions from doctors and women. When do you start screening mammogram? How often do you do it? I'm glad you're starting with that question because, as you know, there's a lot of controversy being presented in the media. So I think a lot of people, many, many women, are very confused. Uh, here at BreastLink, uh, I and the BreastLink family, um, who are dedicated to the early detection of breast cancer, we follow the guidelines set forth by all the major medical organizations that have expertise in breast cancer care. Those organizations include the American College of Radi Radiology, the Society of Breast Imaging, the American College of OBGYN. These are all major, major medical organizations. And their recommendation is for all women to start screening mammograms at age 40. So every woman who is of average risk mm -hmm. should be getting a baseline mammogram at age 40. And then they should be receiving these mammograms once a year. So basically, it's really simple. You just start at 40 and do it yearly, at least as long as you're in good health. Absolutely. And, and then, you know, we know that some of our patients, uh, you had mentioned average risk women, so women who don't have a strong family history or a previous history of a high risk biopsy or something of the sort, but uh, do you have some general rules on, on women who are at higher risk that do have the family history or do have uh, changes, previous biopsies that are higher risk? How, how do you handle those patients? Yeah, so there are different guidelines for women who are at higher risk to develop breast cancer. And, you know, I can't go into all the women who are at high risk, but certainly like, we can touch upon a few of uh, indications in more commonly seen women who have a high risk. Mm -hmm. um, and these would include women who have a strong family history of breast cancer, especially if a woman has a first degree relative, and that would be a mother or a sister or a daughter who has a history of breast cancer, and if they develop that breast cancer at a young age, at a premenopausal age. So for example, if a mother was diagnosed with breast cancer at age 46, mm -hmm. then her daughter should start screening mammogram prior to age 40. She should start 10 years prior to the age of diagnosis that the mother had. So in other words, her daughter should now start screening mammogram at age 36 rather than 40. So it's younger than 40. Also, if a woman has received radiation therapy mm -hmm. uh, at a young age, perhaps for lymphoma, then she should start getting her screening mammograms earlier than age 40. So if she had the radiation therapy to her chest, let's say at age uh, 20 and she stopped at age 22, then she should start screening mammogram at age 30 because the guidelines mm -hmm. Uh, will recommend that they begin screening mammogram eight years after stopping the radiation therapy. So you can see that there are a certain subset of women who will need to start screening mammograms earlier than age 40. Right. When we get into these subjects, they kind of go beyond a real simple discussion, but the women that do have this history of radiation exposure or strong family history really should have their risk set up. We have risk assessment programs that allow us to do that. And of course, it's not just the mammograms. There's other imaging issues that we need to, to understand if we're going to give women maximum benefit from early detection. So what are some of the other uh, newer uh, diagnostic procedures you have to help in the uh, quest to di diagnose cancer as early as possible? So that's a great question. What I do want to reiterate that is that mammography remains the gold standard for the early detection of uh, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So no subset of women should not get a screening mammogram. So what we're talking about now is women who have a slightly higher risk and they may require an additional test in addition to the mammogram. Mm -hmm. So what can these women receive and what can they get? Well, there are screening breast ultrasound examinations and they're excellent. 
and they're also screening breast MRI examinations. And uh, the way to determine whether or not uh, a patient should get this should really be done between her doctor and the woman herself. It's really an individualized approach. Uh, and many questions will be asked to the patient, just as you had said. It won't just involve her family history. It will also involve her own personal history. Right, and how concerned uh, she is. Now, you do bring up a, a, a kind of a challenging issue between the woman and her primary care doctor. A lot of the doctors are so busy now that to do risk assessment, uh, she, they just may not get it from their private doctor. They may have to go onto the internet or come to a, a, a program, a, a hospital-based program or one like ours where we have it within our organization to have a more accurate uh, issue of risk assessment. Um, one of the issues, though, in terms of determining risk is the issue of breast density. And uh, could you explain a little bit about uh, what the radiologist means when she says the person has dense breasts or fatty breasts? I'd be happy to. So just going back a little bit in time, in April 2013, California passed a law, and it was entitled the Breast Density Law. And I think that's when we started hearing more about breast density in the media, and we, the women became curious about what is breast density. So on a very basic level, a woman's breast is made up of a combination of breast tissue and fat. The ratio of the breast tissue versus fat is genetically determined. The way that we determine what the density or how much breast tissue versus fat a woman has is based on how their breasts appear on a mammogram. So a woman's density is considered more dense if she has more breast tissue than fat on the mammogram. But if she has more fat than breast tissue, then her breasts are not dense. They are considered fat. Why is this important? Why is there so much hype about this? Well, there's two reasons. Women with dense breasts have a slightly higher chance of developing breast cancer. But more importantly, women who have dense breasts have, uh, excuse me, I'm going to back up. And more importantly, breast cancers can be hidden on mammograms in women who have dense breasts. In other words, the mammogram is not quite as sensitive in finding early cancers in women who have dense breasts. So it's very important for women to know if they have dense breasts because that could mean that their mammogram is not quite as good and perhaps they should be having a conversation with their doctor and inquiring whether they should have one of the additional studies that we just discussed, perhaps a screening breast ultrasound, which is not very invasive at all. Or perhaps if they're at even higher risk for other reasons, perhaps they then need to get a screening breast MRI examination. Right. So what you're saying is that since breast cancers are usually show up as white calcifications or white density, they light up on a fatty breast. It's like a, a lit match in a dark room. You can see it obviously, whereas I know the expression I've heard you say before, where most of the breast tissue is white and you have a white cancer hiding and there's like trying to find a snowman in a snowstorm. But it's, it's the issue yes. of contrast. Yes, yes, it absolutely is. And a woman with dense breasts, there's not much contrast between the cancer and the background of dense breasts, whereas in a woman with non-dense breasts, a woman with more fatty breasts, there's quite a bit of contrast between the white cancer and the black background of fat. So, so women with primarily fatty breasts on mammogram, they get a report they're either fatty or sometimes they say predominantly fatty. Is there any extra imaging needed in those women? You know, again, it's going to depend on their risk factor. So if they're at extremely high risk because they have a long line of women in their family who have developed breast cancer at an early age, even in women with fatty breasts, they may require a screening MRI examination. However, for the average risk woman, if she has a fatty breast, a mammogram is wonderful. And more than likely, that is all that she needs to, as a screening breast exam. Right. And then in terms of... Uh, the women with the dense breasts that aren't at particularly high risk, so I take it you're saying that a screening ultrasound, both breast, whole breast screening, in addition to the mammogram, would be the, the choice that you would recommend? Well, there is controversy, and I really do think that it depends on the individual. Uh, their anxiety level, and there are other risk factors, because there are other risk factors that we take into account besides the family history. Mm -hmm. 
and that would even include her hormonal status and when she, if she's had a child before and what age she had the child mm -hmm. and, um, and other risk factors that would be taken into account. Yeah. Um, for a woman who has intermediate risk, in, med in other words, it's still higher than the average, but not quite high risk, but an intermediate risk in dense breasts, I think a screening breast ultrasound is an excellent tool. Yes. I think that's kind of agreed upon. I, I do see a lot of women that don't have any risk factors, and I kind of go over this explanation, and they kind of look at me in the eye and say, Doc, just tell me what you'd do if I were your wife. Uh -huh. And the re answer to that is I'd be inclined to, to order the extra test because we know from studies that are published that it, the screening ultrasound doubles the pickup of small cancers for women with dense breasts. Now, I know there's some controversy. Not everybody agrees that, but I think the newer studies are showing even some better results. So mm -hmm. when we catch these cancers really early, we save the breast. The prognosis is excellent. Now, you did mention high-risk women, and it's kind of hard knowing just who meets that threshold, but we mm -hmm. do have criteria. We have programs where we can identify actual risk. And so if you have a high-risk woman with a dense breast, what is your advice for those women? If it's a truly high risk, and in the medical field, when we discuss high risk, uh, we're referring to women who have a lifetime risk of development of breast cancer of greater than 20%. 20% is really the magic number in our field, as you know. And so with those women, we would recommend adding a screening breast MRI examination in addition to their annual screening mammogram. So. Uh, the, uh, the issue of when to stop mammograms comes up, is there, this imaging, is there a time in your mind, can you come up with a number or does it have to be individualized? So there is no hard and fast rule as to when a woman should stop getting her mammogram. There is a general consensus that when a woman reach, reaches in the age of 75, that she should have a personalized conversation with her doctor, just to make sure that she's still in good health, that if something is found on the mammogram that requires further testing or imaging or even a biopsy, that she's in good enough health to undergo the biopsy. Uh, and I think that that's a really a good number just to have in the back of your mind. If you're 75, just have a conversation with your doctor and, mm -hmm. and, and make sure that you should continue having your annual mammograms. I can tell you my personal practice, I have many women over the age of 75, many women in their 80s now. I have some women even in their 90s because women, as we know, and men, uh, human beings in general nowadays are living much, much longer right. That's and having healthier lives. What I see in my practice, and uh, there is a point when you, I think as a physician, you have to say the benefits at your age with your state, state of health are such that they're pretty doggone small and you can consider the option. Some of those ladies will go to a yearly exam and then we'll just do the mammogram if, if we need more information. But it is an individualized decision and there's no magic number, I think, that you've made mm -hmm. that point so well. One last point that I'd like to deal with, just so everybody's clear on this, sir, we've talked about various types of ultrasound. Could you just make it clear the difference between the standard diagnostic ultrasound and then what you referred to as a screening ultrasound? Sure, and I think that those two terms, diagnostic and screening, also apply to mammograms. Mm -hmm. So this is a good time for us to discuss what is a screening mammogram and screening ultrasound versus a diagnostic mammogram or a diagnostic ultrasound. Mm -hmm. The issue is screening versus diagnostic. Right. So when we use the terminology screening, we're, we're referring to an exam that a, a, a woman, a patient, uh, has in the absence of any symptoms. Mm -hmm. she, she, as far as she knows, she's healthy. Mm -hmm. She has no complaints. She has no problems that she's aware of. And the point of a screening exam is for the early detection of breast cancer. It's to discover cancers before the patient herself would know about it, or even her doctor. It's before anybody could feel anything or see anything abnormal. And screening exams are life-saving. Mm -hmm. They're very, very important because that is when the cancers can be found when they're still curable. And that's really what we're, our goal is, is, is to save lives. On the other hand, a diagnostic mammogram or a diagnostic ultrasound is ordered on a woman when she feels that there may be a problem, or her doctor 
is concerned about a problem. Perhaps somebody noticed a lump in her breast or even saw some skin thickening. Or somebody notices that she's feeling a focal area of pain that's persisting for many months and not changing. Or perhaps she's noticed that there's some nipple discoloration or scaling or some nipple discharge, which is also known as some leakage from the nipple. And that raises the question, do I have cancer? Is there a problem? What is causing this change in my breast? And in those cases, a diagnostic study, a diagnostic mammogram, and possibly even a diagnostic ultrasound will be ordered. And when there's a diagnostic mammogram, as compared with a screening mammogram, usually we do order extra views of the specific area of concern so we can really, really evaluate and study a specific area. Of course, we don't ignore the rest of the breasts, but we pay special attention to any area of concern. One other issue, I think it's very important that the woman, if she does have a symptom, if she alerts the technician so she knows to get the extra views and realizes that it will be handled differently from a screening. Because most of the women come in for a screening, but if there's been a change, make sure you report it. And oftentimes the technicians ask, but it, you've got to be prepared to explain it. And, it just works better that way. Absolutely. And in order to try to help our patients do that, we do give them a patient questionnaire when they check in. Because as you sort of alluded to, sometimes it's not at the top of their mind when the women come in. They don't realize how important it is to let us know, let, our, let her health professionals know that there's been a change in her breast appearance or the feel of her breast. And so we do ha give a questionnaire to try to elicit those answers. Um, and it's very, very important. Well, I think we've hit a lot of information here. I think knowledge is power. Uh, women have to take control uh, of their health we want to empower women to make the right decisions. What we can do here is detect cancers, as June said, when they still have the potential for cure. So we need to screen women. We need to take advantage of new technology. We need to communicate well. But when we do all those things right, we're incredibly successful in detecting cancers uh, early when we have the potential to cure the cancer without drastic surgery or chemotherapy. So June, thank you for being with us today, and I think you've given some excellent information. Thank you for having me.